I wanted to make this short video today about an idea that I had in regards to the Mixolydian mode. I've alluded to this idea in some of the other videos that I've done, and I'll probably keep alluding to this idea in future videos too because I do think it's really important. It gets to the core of the sound of the Mixolydian mode. Now, a lot of people might argue that the Mixolydian mode, the core of the sound of that mode, is the dominant seventh chord. And that's not entirely untrue, but I think, you know, I'm talking more about an improv setting along the lines of the stuff that Grateful Dead did and that Fish do and a lot of jam bands do, where you're jamming more over uh, an open vamp, a single chord, or a uh, short little repetitive chord progression. The dominant seventh chord to me has kind of a blues sound. And that's not what we're really going for in these types of Mixolydian vamps. So what I think is the actual core of the sound is your one chord combined or juxtaposed with the sound of the chord built off of the flatted seventh. And you might remember that the flatted seventh is one of the, is sort of the defining note of the Mixolydian mode. So the, the chord built off of that step of the scale combined with the home chord really gets to the core of the Mixolydian sound. So if we're in D Mixolydian, your one chord is going to be a D, obviously, and then your flatted seventh chord is going to be a C, a whole step below that. So if you combine the notes of a D chord with a C chord, those notes almost make up the entire Mixolydian mode right there. And in fact, if you stretch that C chord out to make it a C major 7th chord, where you add the 7th onto it, that, in fact, does, when added to the notes of the D chord, that gives you all seven of the notes that are available in the D Mixolydian mode. So to me, the sound of those, those two chords juxtaposed or put next to each other, sort of, is really the key to the sound of Mixolydian. So now something else to sort of add into the way that you think about the Mixolydian mode. So if your home notes are the notes of the home chord, the one chord, so in this, in this case the D chord, well then any of the other notes, in this case the notes from the C major 7 chord, are more away from home. So those notes are going to give you a little more tension because they are non-chord tones. Let me just kind of show you a little bit what that sounds like. I'll start up a play along here and I'll play some ideas off of a D chord. And then in addition to that, I'll start adding, adding in some ideas off of a C major seventh chord. <laughs> Uh, D pentatonic that I was playing there, so real straight up ideas off of the D chord. Listen to what happens if I play a C major 7 arpeggio over that D chord. Now I'll point out, I took that C major 7 arpeggio, which in this case looked like this. And then after I finished playing that arpeggio, I came down and landed to a note off of the D chord. And now there's lots of different ways that you can sort of flesh this out. You can look at some of the other chords that sort of overlap with the C major 7 chord. One example of that would be an E minor chord. If you take the C major 7, which is made up of C, E, G, and B, well, if you drop the C out of that, it's, it just leaves you with E, G, and B, and that makes up an E minor chord. So therefore, some ideas off of E minor will also work to build a little bit of a tension thing in D Mixolydian. Another idea might be to look at the relative minor of that C major 7 chord. So the relative minor of C is A minor. When you're improvising, the relative major and minor can be handled almost interchangeably. 
So in addition to C major 7, you could also play ideas off of A minor. Pentatonic scales also give you another way to flesh this out. So I can juxtapose the sound of the D pentatonic scale, the D major pentatonic scale, with the sound of the C major pentatonic scale. And in fact, once again, if I combine those two scales, the D major pentatonic with the C major pentatonic, that will also give me all seven notes of the D mixolydian mode. I know a lot of guitar players tend to think in terms of like this minor pentatonic scale. God knows I do. So the relative minor of D would be B minor. Relative minor of C would be A minor. So again, we can juxtapose the sounds of the B minor pentatonic with the A minor pentatonic. And again, th those notes that come from either the C major 7 chord, the A minor pentatonic scale, or the C major pentatonic scale, or the E minor pentatonic scale, which I alluded to earlier, those can all be juxtaposed with the D chord tones. And again, when you take all of these ideas, these, all of these ideas that get you away from the D chord, those build a little bit of a sense of tension, which then generally needs to get resolved by coming back to the D chord. So once again, I'll uh, start my play along here. I'll just play a few licks using each of these different ideas just to show you what they sound like. So here's D. So experiment with that a little bit. Try it out in some other keys. Just remember, you've got your home chord, your one chord, whatever key you're in. Add, go down a whole step and make a major chord and add that to your home chord. And then you can flesh that out in all those different ways by either using you know, a pentatonic scale or using the relative minor of that. Lots of different ways to flesh that out, but it's really easy to remember and it really gets to the heart of the sound of the mixolydian mode.